Hello everyone, I'm Dr. W.H. Pennywitt. And I'm Linda Pennywitt. And we are going to begin a series of, oh, maybe 10, 15 minute videos on where we came from and how we got the skills and talents that we have. Um, especially where taking authority as a believer, where spiritual warfare is concerned, and really the whole family um, got yes. quite a baptism by fire in that one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into what we mean by baptism by fire. Um, it all started out when? When did it all start out for us, for you and I? When we met in cemetery, I mean seminary. <laughs> cemetery. <laughs> we met in seminary, and um, I did not want to go. But God told me to go, so I did, and now I know why to meet my wonderful husband. And I didn't have any idea why I was going either. I just knew that I, <laughs> it's not that I didn't want to go, um, but I went, uh, had custody of my son, Will, and he was maybe a year old when we got there, a year and a half. He, he was two and a half when we met year and a half when we got there and um, we knew right off the bat that we were supposed to be together and that's a whole other story we're not going to get into that one <laughs> but we knew we were supposed to to be together and right off right from the start we had to do spiritual warfare right away yes mm -hmm. um, it was it was kind of it was kind of odd the way that we were constantly attacked even yeah. when we were in a seminary Mm -hmm. But then, of course, one thing led to another, and we had two beautiful red-headed children, Josiah. Well, we were married first, obviously. Yes. Well, that, <laughs> maybe we need to say that to some people, yes, but yes. to me that goes without saying. I'm not going to have any babies unless I'm married. Yes. But, um, so we got married. Um, a couple of years later, along right. came our son, Josiah. And then, Nicole. And then we decided that it was God's will for us to pastor a church. And so we started praying about that. And not too long after we started praying about that, we were told about a church that was about 40 miles away from where we had lived. And we're not going to mention any names. The names are going to be changed to protect the innocent, so to speak. But... Um, we ended up in a rural community, and our church was like 12 miles outside of this one tiny town. It was the county seat, and then there was another larger city, a little bit larger city. It had a Walmart. Yes. It actually had a Walmart. Not a really, not a super center Walmart. Small one, but it was a Walmart. <laughs> but it, it, it did have the groceries and some of the dry goods. Yeah, I guess it did. I yeah, yeah one of the smaller ones. It was ones. small. So anyway, so um, we were right in the middle of that. And um, I always like to say we were so far out in the country, and I actually did this a time or two, um, I could actually walk out to the, it, the gravel driveway. The church is here, gravel driveway about 150 feet long, and then the parsonage. So we were like 25 feet away from the parsonage, really, or from the, the, the church. And I could walk out to the end of the lane across the road and get the mail in my boxers, and nobody would see me. And that's how far out in the country we were. So trying to grow a church out in the middle of nowhere, but well, we had to pick that if we had to pick anything, you know. But we also realized that it wasn't a normal church, didn't we? It didn't take very long to figure that out, yes. Um, what we didn't realize, and we have to bring this in at this juncture, for a six state area, this little tiny county seat was the center for witchcraft, uh, the Wiccan contingency was very large there, and we later found out that most of the city government was um, uh, contained this Wiccan contingency. And um, there was animal and, as far as we know, people, human sacrificing that took place out in the, the rural areas there. Um, but 
We, and I had been a partner with uh, Mom and Dad Copeland for a long time. Um, I was a charter member of Ed Dufresne's First Church, and so because of that, we learned a lot about this younger couple named Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and they had just been ministering like, I think, seven years when I became uh, a member of Ed Dufresne's First Church. Palace Verde Faith Center is what it was called. And so, Linda wasn't, you were saved, but you weren't spirit-filled when we met. Mm -hmm. But I very much was, and it wasn't too long after we met that you became spirit-filled. Mm -hmm. And so, we knew that the goings-on in that area where we were pastoring, we knew that it couldn't hurt us. Right. But we didn't know how to hurt it. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how to gain the victory over it. So it just was a loggerhead, just back and forth, back and forth. And we learned how to do spiritual warfare. And we would see strange, odd things happen, like poltergeist type stuff. Didn't scare us. Like a door in the house in the parsonage would slam numerous times. Uh, cold breezes would blow through the house when the windows and the curtains were completely shut. Uh, you know, apparition type things. Um, things would come flying. Things wouldn't just fly off the shelf, they'd fly off the shelf and just hang there for a few seconds before they would fall. And you know, Linda, that really didn't scare us. No, no. And because you and I were not afraid, our children weren't afraid either. No. And they were young. Um, I think uh, oldest, our oldest was maybe 13, uh, Josiah was six, and Nicole had just turned four after we had moved. And they would all just, we would laugh. And yeah. so they would follow and they would laugh too. So they were not afraid either. But let me interject here. When we first did move into the parsonage to take over the church, um, God had spoke to us and had told us to pray two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, two, two hours, hours in the evening. evening. Right. And, you know, we didn't understand why, but, you know, we were going to be obedient, which, praise God, we were, because it was during those times of praying in the Spirit most of the time. Yeah. We very rarely prayed in English because we weren't quite sure what we were praying for. Well, the Holy Spirit instructed us specifically. Right. Pray in tongues. Right. So that is where I really believe that that was where the Holy Spirit really began working with us and, and helping yeah. us to understand more and more as we prayed in the Spirit. And um, you, we called it warring tongues, and we would, we would, we knew enough to speak the word. We knew enough to say, Satan, you can't harm us, you can't hurt us. It wasn't until we pastored this church for six years, and it wasn't until much later in the pastorate that we learned about taking authority over and pulling down the stronghold, the prince of power of the air. There was a specific prince or power of the year over that area, and we're going to get into who he was a little bit later and how the Lord and us defeated him and completely pulled him down. Um, long story short, by the end of our pastorate, we had the spirit realm in that area locked up so tight that the Wiccan contingency couldn't even meet. No. They wouldn't meet. Word got back to us, uh, it, it's such a state of confusion for them, they can't even meet anymore. And honey, they threw everything at, at us that they knew how to throw. We even have pictures of some of it. There was, I think we had, what, six tornadoes thrown at us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I had had enough after about the third or fourth one, and uh, the church was, the, the basement was dug out of, like, dirt and rock was put in it, so... The basement of the church was the place to go whenever the tornadoes would hit. And so I just had enough of it, and I was full of the word, I was full of faith, and I went out there in the front yard, and there was one coming down out of the sky, and you followed me out there because you said, you're not going out there without me, and I said, then let's go, because it, it, it's, it's not touching the ground, not this time. Prayer times, too. Yeah, absolutely, and I realized that, too. So we took authority over that, that tornado, and as we were taking authority over it, you said something like, nobody's gonna believe this, I'm gonna go in and get the camera. And I thought, yeah, hurry up, you know, and I just, I kept taking authority over that, that tornado. Well, when you left, it was kind of getting the better of me. And I realized what prayer times two is. 
I was like, in the name of Jesus, peace be still, go back up in the sky. And then I'd say, Linda, <laughs> come quick. And she came running and took a few pictures of, of, of this tornado as it was going back up. So we even have photographic evidence of this, of all the things that had happened. And what we want to do is we want to let you know that no matter what the devil throws at you, he cannot defeat you. Yeah. Nothing to be afraid about. Nothing to be afraid of. I don't care, honey, the poltergeist stuff that, that, that happened to us. And later on, people, yeah. uh, somebody actually came into our house and loosened. It was propane gas that we heated the house with because we were out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Somebody even came in and loosened the propane gas line. Mm -hmm. They nice. still couldn't kill us. They, they, more than once they tried. They could not do it. And there's a reason for it. And we want to have a few sessions, 10, 15 minute sessions, to let you know that you can defeat the enemy. And let's face it, Linda, in these end days, it's time yes. that we take authority. Yes. Take the authority that Jesus himself has given us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians yes. chapter 3. We're going to be getting into that. In fact, the very next session, we're going to start getting into that, and then we're going to be able to explain quite a few of the things that, that happened and how the Lord moved upon us and taught us how to deal with them. So until the next time, uh, it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's going to get better and better and better. So whatever you do, don't miss it, right? Yes. We'll see you later.